Okay. We are coming back in. Uh, so yeah, just a um, couple more questions which I wanted to ask the Van Prince. Um, hopefully you can come back in. But I hope everybody who's been watching so far has enjoyed and has uh, picked up a lot of interesting, helpful information. Hey, Ki Kiara X, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm just going to wait for the Divine Prince to come back in and he's here again. So let me just bring him back in. So um, I think as we were just talking, we're talking about how he sees 2020, how you see 2020. Yeah. Yeah. That, so, you know, all things happen for a reason. So, so just within the course of that 67, 60 second break, um, I was able to see some things on Instagram that I have to elaborate on. Um, and it has everything to do with the very last few things that I said about economy, the wealth of and the footprint of, of the Yoruba. And so even today, um, in the spirit of the Orisha romance and sort of this desire for us to want to connect uh, uh, with something, you know, ancient, something ancestral, there's still that pull for what's most material, what's most attractive, what, what holds wealth. You know, and, and I'm looking at some of my African American brothers and sisters who, who are wearing galays bigger than they wear in Nigeria now. <laughs> you know, and and Arisha, like the prosperity ministry, looks successful, looks wealthy, looks prosperous, you know, and so people are still being, you know, sort of manipulated by the very same principles and ideas that locked us into the church or locked us into toxic forms of, of Islam, you know, because we haven't changed our mindset. We haven't changed that, that idea that we're just as good as our brother and sister. We're just as good as the other ethnic group, the other country, the other you know, sort of location. So as long as voodoo it, it remains to be seen as poor or impoverished, you know, th th then that dynamic will be slow to change. Now, having said that, there's room for opportunity. And particularly right now, um, to, you know, two years ago, uh, August, I believe 30th, 29th, 2018, uh, Dagbo Honan II arrived here in New Orleans from Wida, Benin. Um, many elders here in the community were there to witness it. Um, he, he basically acknowledged me as the king and leader of New Orleans voodoo. Uh, Dagbo and I have had a social media connection for some years through Facebook. So I can only envision that he may see our demonstration, hear our demonstration. I know I have other uh, friends and, 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 and now loved ones, you know, in, in West Africa who see beyond the Orisha romance, but, but see the desire for reconnection and are willing to understand their own place, you know, in that reconnection. Um, culture has become a tourist-based industry, whether it's in Osogbo, whether it's in Haiti, you know, spend a lot of money, come here, spend a certain amount of time, feel a sense of reconnection, you know, to your motherland. But it has to go beyond that. It has to be something more real, more tangible, if we are going to see uh, ATR, traditional African-based religious systems, grow and and receive the level of respect that we give mainstream religions today yeah because i was just about to ask you um if you because even even though there is fixations for people upon 
whatever looks most materialistic or eye-catching or is most popular at the moment or Beyonce is promoted. Mm -hmm. There's also um, the fact that at least this is somewhat of a shift in the culture that people are looking towards a different... Um, they're looking for something different because they can see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what served them in the past isn't working anymore. Mm -hmm. or it hasn't mm -hmm. worked. It hasn't mm -hmm. served them. So just, don't you think just people's needs to look for something else is a positive sign, even though it's just the beginning? I agree. Absolutely. Um, I, 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 I'm just concerned that if we don't renew our minds, mm -hmm. then even now in African dress, in African face, we then repeat the same mistakes we made, you know, in, in the oppressor's system of belief um, and religion. And so we, we not only see, you know, sort of the bastardization and appropriation of Arisha that, that happens, you know, in, in pop culture and in social media, uh, it's mixed up with voodoo, it's mixed up with, with witchcraft, it's mixed up you know, with tarot card reading and fortune telling, uh, but we also see that same prosperity-based uh, elitist mindset that if you aren't of a certain income, if you aren't of a certain tax bracket, um, they're not acknowledging you, you know, in, in this rise of Arisha. They're not acknowledging you, you know, in, in this sort of rebirthing of African tradition that's happening in our community um, right now. Uh, people with high degrees who, you know, live in a particular area of, of the country, but who now speak for the entire community without making any inroads, you know, in the community. Um, these are forms of appropriation that we're now seeing, you know, with a black face, with a brown face you know, um, and not necessarily, you know, the oppressor coming in and saying, you know, you all can't do, can't practice this, this religion. Uh, that's what concerns me. So if the masses don't know what's real, what's important, what's organic to these traditions, then it makes, you know, the leaders and the ministers and the teachers, their job that much more difficult to have to re-educate and reteach Every day, you know, sort of the basics about this tradition. Voodoo is not witchcraft. I have to reteach that every day because there's a flood of people, West African and American, you know, who are promoting it as, as witchcraft, who are promoting it as a shortcut to love and relationship, a shortcut to, to the lotto, a, a shortcut, you know, to, to some supernatural, you know, breast growth or penis growth or something. You know, and, and it's, again, bastardizing the tradition. It, it's not uh, keeping our ancestors in a tradition in a place of, of reverence. So it appears as if the authentic footprint uh, is smaller than what I believe it truly is. I think just like in the 1700s, uh, many of us have been forced to live underground in, in this tradition based on how... Uh, we're treated and, and how the world is, is existing outside of our, our voodoo houses. Amazing. Um, well, it's been such a pleasure speaking to you. I think, you know, there's so much that uh, I've still got to go sit down and meditate upon. And I'm sure a lot of people watching the video will do the same. Um, just before we go, I'd love if you can tell everybody about uh, things that you have coming up books, appearances, um, other interviews and so forth, and where we can find out more. Um, uh, well, I can always be reached at www.houseofthedivineprince.com um, www.houseofthedivineprince.com And of course, I accept an email and email requests, questions request at divineprince at houseofthedivineprince.com um, there's a great deal that's happening. Um, not a much that I can say right now here uh, live on air. I, I would like to say, however, that um, I, I would like us to have this discussion, you know, and many discussions like this again in the future. 
um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about sort of the superhero elements to the culture and, and the tradition that we are seeing, you know, happen now uh, with, with the, pa the passing of Chadwick Boseman and the great success, you know, of, of Black Panther. Your ideas about Rise of the Orisha um, in terms of cine cine cinematography and, and, and artistic um, endeavors, I think that's an important um, element to this to not only uh, keeping ATR alive, but also giving uh, young minds and impressionable minds, you know, reason to dream, reason, you know, to hope for. There are indeed uh, enslaved Africans like Bois Coupi, for instance, who, who was given um, supernatural abilities, you know, as an enslaved African. I had his arm cut off, you know, to prevent him from escaping and still chose to run away, still kept running away, uh, was said to be impervious to bullets. <laughs> you know, the, the stories about him grew, you know, in, in the enslaved South because we needed hope uh, just as we do today. Uh, I think it's a shame that we, you know, have to deify. Are you there? Yeah, no, I wanted to ask what was his name um, of the... Uh... Uh, Bois Coupe, B-R-A-S-C-O-U-P-E-E, -E, Bois Coupe. He was an enslaved African. Uh, his name was Squire, but after they cut off his arm, Bois Coupe. And, and so he was a, a noted slave that refused to be kept, uh, kept uh, escaping, uh, and of course, we don't know these stories because they don't want us to know stories that empower us. They don't want us to know that there were escaping slaves that fought the system. You know, we know of Nanny of the Maroon. We don't know enough about Bois Coupe, who, who was given magical, legendary, you know, attributes be, because of his refusal and his resistance to the system. Uh, so I think that there's not only uh, creative opportunities for us to continue to make movies, books, you know, theater, you know, that that reinforces uh, the great magic that we are, you know, as people, but also, again, fuels that desire, that economy for, that space for something that will last beyond us. I I'd love to see a day where there will be just as many uh, ATR temples, if not more, than black churches. Mm. Well, I think the day is coming, especially uh, as we have more people like yourself doing the work and, you know, putting out information and content. Uh, and yeah, I'm grateful for you for, for coming um, on board today and for everything that you do as well. So, so thank you. Um, thank you. All is a blessing. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, this is going to be live on, this is going to be on my IGTV, so check it out, share it, um, and have a wonderful weekend. All is a blessing. Peace.